E Cascadia coming out. And I, I looked at the E Cascadia. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful truck on their webpage. It looks so nice, just like the, the Tesla semi truck. It looks so beautiful. But the thing that people don't understand is that as a trucker, as someone who drove a truck for 15 years, you have to understand that the technology that these trucks are trying to replace right now is the technology that built the world that we live in. Nothing beats right now the diesel engine. The diesel engine is continually, even right now, supplying everything that we have. And, and, and for people who are investing in the EV semi space, you have to understand it is not the same as investing in a car maker or an automobile, a personal transport vehicle. Trucks are built to do work, hard, heavy duty work. It's not an auto show, it's not an auto salon, it's not a fashion show, it's not who's got the, the cleanest, the coolest looking truck. It's about what truck works. 150,000 miles a year in rain, snow, sleet, in the elements, running six, seven, eight hours straight at a time. With 80,000 pounds banging on the suspension and tearing that truck apart every time it hits a pothole or a bump or has to get on the brakes to go down a hill. It is not about, oh, look how pretty it is. Now, I'm not saying Tesla makes bad vehicles. I'm not saying any EV maker makes bad vehicles. I'm just saying, my personal opinion, look into HYLN. It's the only company that I've seen, and yes, I've driven one of their vehicles before, that actually has an applicable real world solution to put it, to put it in a platform by Peterbilt, a company who's been around for over a hundred years. You think Peterbilt would know how to build a suspension, right? After a hundred years of going up and down roads, highways, dirt roads, back roads, potholes, driving in all types of weather types. You think they would know how to get the, 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 uh, the, the weight to wheel ratio right? You think they would know how to put the right suspension in? Uh, how to, uh, what's the right length for the frame? Where to put the exhaust? What kind of problems might come up? The electrical wiring, things like that. Why would you go against something like that? Why would you go against a hundred years of experience, a well-trusted name to get into something that it's like, oh, we just made it now. And I'm not saying Tesla's bad or anything like that, but I'm seeing in the news about, I'm hearing about these breakdowns and I don't know what these breakdowns are, but everyone's so enamored with Tesla. And I'm like, how do you know? It's not a car. It needs to run 100,000 miles plus a year, pulling freight, heavy freight, dirty freight, on strange roads, uneven roads, backing into docks, uneven docks running in all types of temperatures, day in and day out, because if we pick the wrong company, if we pick, for you investors out there, if we pick the wrong thing, if we, if we just invest, well, well, this is the best one, this is the best company, and, and, and we should invest in this. You understand, not, not, just, not just America, the whole world fails. The products that move in the back of the truck, that diesel truck that's blocking you when you're going down the road, there's stuff in the back. Apples, meat, curtains, Cars sometimes, car parts, anything and everything you can think of. iPhone cases, laptops, your glasses, your, your toothpaste, everything you can think of that you've ever owned in your life or you have in your home came in the back of the truck and, and still does until this day. So we can't just pick the, oh, well, this one's so pretty. No, it needs to work. I don't care what it looks like. And, and truckers know this, it, it doesn't matter. When, you, when you're trying to make money, you're trying to get goods where they gotta go, nobody cares what your truck looks like. Nobody cares how you got it there. The point is, did it get there? So when you're investing in, in, in oh, I wanna invest in EV, clean energy technology, don't look, and as, as people say, don't judge the book by its cover. Don't go with the popular name or the best looking truck. Do your research. Find someone who drives a truck. Ask them what it's really like, what the truck has to go through. Can it handle this really? Not, not can it make the sales. It's fine if, if, if whatever company sells tons and tons of trucks, but it won't be long before you find out that truck is garbage or not. Because if it breaks down, it doesn't work. The product's not gonna get there. And that truck company's not gonna buy that truck. They're gonna get rid of it as fast as they can. They're gonna go with the one that works. You understand what I'm saying? I know I'm ranting right now. That's the whole point of this video. I just, I just had to get it off my chest, I had to say it, but I mean, this is the thing you have to understand. We are investing and we are looking, looking for the vehicle that works. Obviously you want it to make the sales, but the one that works, the one that can get the job done, not just for the sake of, oh, I want to invest and I want to make money, for the sake of, I want America to still be America. I want the world to still be the world. 
We can't have trucks breaking down. If we're gonna replace diesel, okay, that's fine. That's what, if that's what, if that's what the government's wanting, you're gonna replace diesel, but it has to work. It has to work like diesel does. It has to get there. It has to endure unbelievable, every real world condition that you can possibly imagine. Strenuous braking, climbing, incredible engine temperatures, uh, wind, rain, sleet. The product still needs to get there. It can't just, oh, well, we had a breakdown, the truck doesn't get here, the economy's gonna fail, no. So think about that, please, when you invest in these companies. Like I always say, check out HYLN. That's the company that, that I think has the most applicable solution. But I mean, for all of our sakes, not just for making money, for, for just the whole global economy, we need to make the right decision. We can't pick the vehicle that just looks pretty, or we hope looks nice, or we hope gets the job done, or hope it's gonna make us some money with the stock price. Please do your research. I'm not, I'm not saying people don't do their research, but if you don't, if, if, you're, if you're new to this EV semi space, don't look at it like it's the car market. It's not. It is definitely not. Find out and learn as much as you can about what it actually takes for a semi truck to get up and down the highway. Find out how, how, how many parts and, and, and I, I really am getting, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm getting kind of heated about all this because I, I think a lot of people feel that you know, trucks themselves are just an annoyance and they're just something that pollute the atmosphere. But I don't think people realize how hard diesel mechanics, truck drivers, and the trucks themselves actually work and what they go through so that we can have the things that we have. And to replace it with something that possibly might break down every day, so America is going to fall apart real fast. It has to be viable. It has to work. I don't care what it looks like. If it can run and it can haul and it can not break down and it can handle all the strenuous conditions, I don't care how fast it accelerates. I don't care how pretty it looks or how aerodynamic it is. Number one, it has to be able to get there with the freight that is in the back day in and day out. We're not talking about once. We're talking about hours on end every day. Hundreds of thousands of miles. Going up and down the roads, braking, dealing with all of the factors. Please pick a truck or pick a company that is making something with a viable solution, something that is applicable to the real world. That's all I have to say.